Hi, welcome to Nursing School Explained. In this video in the ventricular dysrhythmia series about ventricular tachycardia. If you haven't already done so, I highly recommend watching my other videos that are in the basic EKG interpretation list so you know how to apply the basic electrophysiology as well as the normal intervals and how to read EKG paper. The other video that might be helpful for you to watch before diving into this ventricular tachycardia is the one about premature ventricular contractions that can sometimes be the precursor to ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia is also known as VTAC and usually means that there is three or more PVCs, which are premature ventricular contractions, in a row. The heart rate usually is greater than 100 and VTAC can be non-sustained, meaning less than 30 seconds, or sustained, meaning greater than 30 seconds. And the, the main difference here, or the important thing to note, is that the patient may have a pulse with VTAC, which means that they are stable or somewhat stable, uh, but they also may be pulseless, which means that they would certainly be unstable then. And a patient who has a pulse with ventricular tachycardia many times will not stay stable for very long until they turn pulseless and become, become unstable. So ventricular tachycardia, just by looking at this rhythm strip, you can already see it looks very different from any other rhythm strip you might have previously seen if you've been following my EKG playlists. The rate for ventricular tachycardia is usually 101, greater than 100, to 250 beats. In this particular case, it's 180. And just like we would always count the QRS complexes, we do the same thing here, although these QRS complexes certainly look a little bit different by being wide and bizarre, which is a characteristic of an abnormal focus or an abnormal cardiac cell located in the ventricles. So if we would count those all the way, we would count them to be 18 and hence the heart rate of 180 here. Rhythm and regularity, essentially regular. There's not a whole lot we can see that's abnormal and looks irregular here. The P wave in ventricular tachycardia may be visible, but uh, may also have no relationship to the QRS complex. So in this case, we can't really determine if there's a P wave anywhere hidden in this very fast rhythm. The chances are higher than that you will see a P wave if the rate is closer to the 101. So the slower the heart rate, the more of a chance that you will see the P wave. But really, that's not what's important here because this is a ventricular dysrhythmia that can be lethal if we don't um, intervene very quickly. And then looking at intervals. So because we don't have a P wave visible, we are not going to have a PRI. And then again, the QRS is greater than 0.12. It has this wide and bizarre looking shape. And it's often difficult to differentiate between the QRS and the T wave. So just like we can't really see the P wave, it is very hard to picture that there's a T wave anywhere in this strange looking rhythm. So ventricular tachycardia is, is pretty easily identifiable, although there's different morphologies or shapes that can happen with this rhythm as well, and we'll look into that going forward. So here we have monomorphic versus polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And monomorphic basically just means one shape. Well, polymorphic means that there's more than one shape. So in this upper example here, you can see they're pretty much all have the same kind of height and uh, the same uh, negative deflection here too. Where in this polymorphic example on the bottom, it's also known as torsades de puentes, which is a French term. And torsades basically just means it kind of is like a spindle. So you can see it kind of goes up and down here. It almost looks like a DNA shape, if you want to call it that. So it's not very straightforward and monomorphic with the same height here. It has this very strange looking shape. And then uh, if you look at these beads here, they from a morphology, from a shape here, they look very similar to the monomorphic ones. 
but these here so there could be a t wave somewhere in hidden in here that could maybe be argued that there's a p or a t wave in there but either way these complexes are wide and bizarre greater than the 0 0.12 which usually makes it pretty easily identifiable that this is a, a type of a ventricular tachycardia now looking a little bit deeper into this polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that is also known as torsades de puentes, which basically means it is kind of an in-between between ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. And it's French meaning twisting of the points. And this is exactly what I was uh, drawing out for you earlier here, this DNA kind of shape that it has. And that means that the QRS changes in shape and amplitude and the width with twisting around the isoelectric line. So the isoelectric line in this case would be somewhere right in there. So it has this strange um, shaping twisting around this isoelectric line. And if you see this rhythm, you better be on guard because it may quickly deteriorate to ventricular fibrillation. It may sometimes be participated, precipitated by a slow heart rate, and it is associated with medications that prolong the QT interval or electrolyte imbalances. That's why it's so important to know the medications and their possible side effects. And if you have a medication that the patient is receiving for the first time, where a side effect says may prolong QT interval, then it's always best to place the patient on an EKG monitor to see what their heart rate and rhythm is doing while they are receiving this medication or shortly thereafter. Causes for ventricular tachycardia. Most common causes is coronary artery disease with a prior myocardial infarction. So that ventricle or the heart has taken some sort of an insult before and now there can be an abnormal electrical pathway, an irritable cardiac cell that causes the ventricular tachycardia. Certainly underlying heart disease, anything that can cause ischemia can cause ventricular tachycardia, as well as cardiomyopathy and uh, tricyclic antidepressant overdose. So that's also fairly commonly seen. Digitalis toxicity, so remember your digoxin is a very, has a very narrow therapeutic range and can cause all kinds of trouble with EKG rhythms. Valve disorders, electrolyte imbalances, acid-base imbalances, and then again, anything that causes increasing catecholamine release. Now, signs and symptoms, if the patient has a pulse, might be chest pain, hypotension, shortness of breath, CHF signs and symptoms, any that would also qualify as acute MI signs and symptoms, and then decreased level of consciousness because of the uh, impaired perfusion to their brain. Now, if the patient doesn't have a pulse, they're probably not going to be complaining of any signs and symptoms. There will be signs and symptoms that you need to be picking up and specifically looking at the cardiac rhythm and seeing that they are in a pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Intervention. So now we have to distinguish, is the patient stable? Do they have a pulse? Or are they unstable and do they not have a pulse? But actually the patient can be stable and can be symptomatic. So they might be complaining of, again, chest pain, shortness of breath, or any of these symptoms that we just looked at. So if the patient is stable, we can put them on oxygen, just like that helps with anybody with uh, premature ventricular contractions. IV antiarrhythmics need to be initiated fairly quickly to stabilize the cardiac membrane and cells from being so irritable and causing this dysrhythmia. Treating the underlying cause, again, if it is due to electrolyte imbalances or acid-base imbalances. And then specifically, if we're dealing with torsades de puentes, this multi or a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, the patient will respond well, usually to IV magnesium, IV phenytoin, which is also dilantin, which is a anti-seizure medication, but it can be very effective in stabilizing a patient who has torsades de pointis, 
or lidocaine, which is also an antiarrhythmic that works well for ventricular tachycardia that is polymorphic. And then if the patient is unstable, so if they are um, now showing signs of hypotension, altered level of consciousness, if they have a pulse, we will want to sedate them if there is time and then perform a synchronized cardioversion. If the patient does not have a pulse, then they will need defibrillation followed by immediate CPR and then follow a CLS protocol to determine the cause and underlying uh, issues associated with this dysrhythmia so we can hopefully bring the patient back. Here are some credits and references for you to look at more practice strips specifically. And then here are the other videos in my EKG interpretation playlist, specifically ventricular dysrhythmias. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, premature ventricular com complexes or contractions can a lot of times uh, precede ventricular tachycardia. And then ventricular fibrillation is another rhythm that can be lethal, uh, as well as PEA, pulseless electrical activity, and asystole. Thanks for watching Nursing Soul Explained. I'll see you soon.